Hello everybody, welcome to the fifth and final video of the tutorial series. What I have set up here is just three lines of text that each represent a different layer that I've created here. To access the layers tab, just go to the top right in the drop down and click on the width. As you can see, all of the layer names are here and you're automatically given a default one. When you want to select a layer, you just need to double click it and it will add a check mark to it. When the layer is selected, anything you create is going to be highlighted by the color you select for that layer. So if I wanted to change layer one's color, you just click on the color swab and move it around the color wheel to whatever you want. Anything you create in this layer now is going to be highlighted with that color as well. And that just means whenever you want to uh, highlight what layer something is in, you can use this color before adding textures to just really signify that. Now, if I wanted to hide a specific layer, let's say I wanted to hide this wood layer, you just select the light bulb here and it will make it go away for a bit. Then we can bring it back by selecting it again. If I wanted to lock a layer in place and not let it move around when I'm working on other layers, then just select the lock command. Now, as you can see, if I try to select everything on this, uh, on this plane, the wood layer won't be selected, but all of the other layers will. But when you unlock it and then try and select again, the wood layer will actually be highlighted. If you wanted to rename a, a layer, you just have to double, double click the name originally. So double clicking will allow you to edit that. If you wanted to create a new layer, you just have to go to new layer using right click on this tab and then rename it whatever you want. Let's just name this layer, layer two. And let's pick a color for this. Let's go with uh, green. And now anything you draw Anything you draw after selecting the layer by double checking it will be put inside of that layer. Now, if I wanted to add sub layers to my original layer, you can do that by right clicking and doing new sub layer. This is a good way to keep a bunch of different things organized for one specific item. So if I had like a, a piece of wood or a wood layer, I'd want a layer for plywood enter that. I can add another sub layer and make this oak wood. And then I can work in each of these layers specifically. Now let's see how we can apply textures using these layers. If we draw, let's say a box, just like that. And we go into our rendered perspective. This is going to give you the uh, the real real life view where you can see materials apply to your models. So if we select this piece or this block, and we go to the materials tab, you can actually select a material through here. We can use a new material, import from our material library, and we can scroll through a bunch of different options. So let's go into wood, and let's just pick something here. Let's go with uh, let's go with this ash polished. Once it's loaded in, you can click OK and it'll apply to your material. Another way to apply materials would also be to just go to your materials tab and click on the plus icon and import from your library. So let's just pick another tier material as well. Let's go with the African teak and then we can select our object, right click on the material and then click assign to object. Now it's a little pixelated, which pretty much just means that um, the repeat value is too low. So an easy way to fix that is just to go and click on the texture and you have to go to mapping channels and increase your repeat value. So let's make this eight and see how that looks after. And then as you can see, the grain is now uh, a lot more visible. But let's say the grain wasn't going in the right direction that we wanted. It's actually a pretty complex way to fix it, but just for your knowledge, I'm gonna show you how to do it. So you have to go into your properties tab, hold shift on your item, and then from here, we can actually use the UV editor because when we went to our textures here and turned on the mapping channels, this actually turns off the original coordinate system 
for our uh, for our piece of wood, which will give us all these other options for texture mapping. So now that we have that, let's click on the UV editor, and it's going to ask you to create a rectangle. This rectangle is going to give you a plane to work on to move around uh, different parts, specific parts of your uh, object. So let's say I wanted to rotate this grain on the top. I would find uh, the piece that corresponds to that. So that looks like it's it. And I would just rotate it on this plane. Let's go 90 degrees. And as you can see, the wood grain actually rotated to match that grain. And once you're done, you just have to click apply and you're good. There's also another way to apply textures. Uh, let's say we drew another box, but we only wanted to apply uh, a texture to this top face. So what we would have to do is do extract surface and click on that top one, hit enter, and now we can work on that separate surface. So now going back to our layers, we can apply this ash to the object and it'll only apply it to our top layer. Okay, now that we have the basics of the program down, I just wanted to end off the series by creating a uh, small model of a parklet. So I'm just going to create a four foot by four foot uh, wooden structure with a bench and a table so that you guys can have some ideas on how to create your own model. So what I did here was just create two pieces of wood that I'm going to be using a lot. So I have a four by four here and a one by four here. So I'm just going to take these and copy them and make a skid from them. So the first one I'm going to move along here to 21 inches and the second one I'm going to move this to 44 inches. And then I'm going to move this piece of wood oh, oops, I'm going to move this piece of wood on top of the other ones. So click move and pick from this point on the corner. Place it there. And I'm going to do the same thing I did. Copy, move this along 21 inches. Place it, copy again, grab from this corner, bring it all the way to the end here. All right, that looks good. Now let's go to our plywood layer and let's add a piece of plywood to the top of this. Let's go from end to end, extrude it out about so half an inch. Let's create a design for this bench. I'm going to put it on the left side over here. So I'm going to go to my corner here, hold control and create a straight line. And now that I have that, let's go to our front view and work on a nice design for a bench here. Take the control point curve. Let's create something that looks free flowing and would be nice to sit on. And that looks Looks good for a bench. Let's go into our perspective view and connect this curve. Select all the curves, let's join them together. And let's extrude this. Let's go about half an inch. That's good. And then let's actually mirror this. So I want it to go all the way to the other side over here. So let's find the midpoint. Now I'm going to create some uh, some one by twos and just follow this curve and just lay them on top of it. All right now that I've got most of it done I just want to show you how I got it done. Uh, pretty much I just created one piece of wood uh, and copied it from the midpoint and just attached it all along the edge of the original shape that I made. And then every time I copy it, I would copy, take from the midpoint, and move it along the curve. And then I would ro rotate it using Rotate 3D. Rotate 3D allows you to select an axis to rotate about. So I use this midpoint axis to take the end point to snap with, and then snap it right along the edge of it. Now that we have most of the details for the bench done, let's just create a simple table. 
let's just create some four by fours there. And then let's extrude this to both. Put it down over here. To there. And put it here. Copy this and bring it over to the other corner. And that looks like a decent height. Uh, then we can create a small tabletop. Then from here, you can add some holes or for flower pots or make wire cuts, wherever you like. So all I'm going to do is just add a small hole for a flower pot possibly. Looks good. And then I'll take the wire cut tool And then now that that's done, you can delete everything else and add textures. So let's pick, let's pick birch for this texture. And let's pick maple for this. And then when you go into rendered, you should have something that looks something like this. You're gonna see curves uh, when you go into rendered mode. So you pretty much just select them after and then delete. And that's pretty much it for the tutorial series. Uh, this is present day Simple Civil talking. Uh, so hello everybody. Uh, thank you for watching this series. I appreciate it. Uh, there was a lot of issues with audio and things like that with this series. But once again, I just wanted to say that this was recorded a while ago. But I feel like it's something that's actually super useful to uh, civil engineers in general. So that's why I wanted to re-upload the videos. Uh, and I hope they helped. You know, I think 3D modeling is actually a huge part uh, of architecture. And it helps for engineers to have a good background in that just so that we can work in unison together. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching guys and I hope it helped.